Hi everyone, this is Al Sabado from alsabado.com, the freelance editor online. Now, a few days ago, uh, November 4, to be exact, uh, a lady by the name of Anne wrote to me and asked me something about how to uh, fill out or how to use the accounting books, and in particular, the web posts I have on my website. Okay, And I'd like to um, discuss further something about how we use our accounting books what do we actually write in our accounting books and I think we have a, a more useful source for that it's the 1701 form now this is the one that has been released in June 2013 and I think this is now available now yeah this is now available in the EBIR forms package I hope you have explored the EBIR forms package version 5.1 all right it's actually more convenient to use particularly among us freelancers because um, we can actually file submit okay our BIR forms online okay so do check it out okay the EBIR forms I think can be accessed from the web uh, from the homepage of BIR, okay, the BIR.gov.ph. Now, do check it out. Okay, so for now, let's go to uh, the books once again. So, for those of us who are using five books, as I am using, uh, I actually have the journal, I have the cash disbursement, I have the cash receipts, the ledger, and the official appointment book that we've been required if I'm not mistaken last year yeah 2014 okay so what do we write in the journal okay it says general journal includes all the business transactions which are recorded in chronological order that is day by day okay and the mandatory data to be present are as follows number one date of transaction number two names of accounts which are debited and credited number three description of accounts or description of transactions and then number four columns for debit and credit okay where exact figures of business transaction are recorded so that's the content of the journal so you find there now bear in mind they're handwritten so there's mine now here we have the cash disbursement i also made a note detailed record of expenses according to classification or category all right now where do we get that i i didn't know yet uh, the items listed here because i started this in 2009 this was released in 2013 so so here they have on page six there you'll find the cost of sales for you to check it out and then you have here uh, under on page six again as uh, under schedule 4c cost of services okay all right under cost of services for those engaged in services indicate only those directly incurred or related to the gross revenue from rendition of services so you have their direct charges uh, which cover uh, salaries wages and benefits and number 21 there's direct charges materials supplies and facilities rental outside services others okay now this form this form is under the forms page of the BIR okay which is also the same version that they have uploaded in the uh, EBIR forms package version 5.1 all right so you'll find their identical uh, entries uh, we have the printout and that's also the one that we're going to print out and then you'll find further on page uh, this is page six page seven here you can choose from here uh, the entries that's applicable to your business all right um, schedule six okay continued ordinary allowable itemized deduction communication light and water which is also under utility uh, depletion depreciation directors fees fringe benefits fuel and oil 
insurance, interest, janitorial, and messengerial services losses, management and consultancy fee, miscellaneous, I added under miscellaneous uh, allowances, okay? Office supplies, I connected there and fees. Other services, professional fees, rental, repairs and maintenance, labor, or and so on and so forth, okay? Oh, my favorite, SSS, GSIS, PhilHealth, and other contributions. Now, when I started my bookkeeping, I I had none of some of the items here. So what I did with my uh, filing last year was I made notes. C miscellaneous and allowances. Okay, C transpo and travel. C miscellaneous and allowances. So if I've covered under my transpo and travel the fees I've put there, I make a note here. Okay. But I think you can do it now with this, all right? Just to give you an idea what to write in your accounting books, do check out the 1701, and that's version June 2013. All right? Now, I'd like also to uh, mention cash receipts, where we write all payments received from our clients. All right? So the proof of payment for that is, of course, our official receipt okay official receipt there now by the way when we uh, fill out our journals and cash disbursements of course um, as much as possible and I think it's mandatory that everything we put in our accounting books should be or should have uh, an official receipt okay now there was a time I um, hired services of a company and before I hired them, I requested for an official receipt. Now, at the end of their service, when they rendered their service, when they're done, they gave me a piece of paper, which is not an official receipt, but it's called provisional receipt. So I called the office and asked them again for the official receipt. And here's what they told me. They said, uh, Mom, uh, we only issue official receipts for uh, non-residential clients. I told them, uh, Mom, uh, alam nyo, masisita po kayo sa ginagawa nyo nyan. Kasi po, ang official receipt po, hindi po to upon re request. All right? Official receipts are not issued upon request. This is mandated by law. We do check out again. Um, issuance of receipts and I told them that um, it's actually misrepresentation of documents when we present to the client a uh, document other than the official receipt no. so you know what few hours after they're right here giving me the official receipt now what about transpo what about fair well too bad we can't request official receipts from taxi drivers or jeepney drivers or tricycle drivers for that matter because who knows if they're registered with the BIR. So what I do is to come up with uh, what I call a note that says chiding fair too because I, I went to the BIR office, I paid my taxes, uh, in the bank and of course I had to commute and that would involve fair money so I put it here right so anything else I haven't talked about um, oh there's the new one the official appointment book now this one was required last year with a supporting document called an affidavit we put here the client's name the date that our communication with them started so in my case and probably in your case as well uh, the date of the email communication becomes the basis for the date that our conversation with them began okay so there the date and time of meeting so I specify their email only and for some of us we're only um, asked 
or required to have few or fewer books some would only have a journal i think because i i suppose these are the people or the taxpayers who've um, opted for the optional standard deduction see on the first page of the 1701 you find their method of deduction so most of us and i for one i've chosen the itemized deduction so i have these books to support that deduction and for others uh, they have the osd again the optional standard deduction but whereby they have 40% uh, of gross sales you can ask that from your rdo how you can shift to osd if you don't like itemized deduction so there you have it that's for now and um